This video is sponsored by Milk Chemistry. Check them out and click the link below for 25% off. Full of ants. Hope they're ready for a voyage. Don't break our boat. So hopefully it's not too heavy and we can get it out to where we're gonna burn it. Now we're entering about hour eight of the burn. Now comes the little bit more difficult part of making sure we don't burn too much and burn holes in it. I think we're on track to finishing early actually. Those might be famous last words. So at the very least, if this doesn't work as a canoe, it'll work as a coffin. A month ago, I started the reset of our channel with a new challenge of rebuilding myself chronologically from the start of human history, exploring the question of if an average person with a basic understanding of humanity's history and base concepts could rebuild themselves back up to modern society. Up to now, I've learned the skills to produce and acquired the resources for a few basic tools. Now to apply them to our largest project yet, a form of transportation. Crossing large bodies of water has been a crucial development of humanity that allowed us to spread around the world, even to isolated regions like Australia and the numerous islands of the Pacific. When the first boat was invented and how exactly it was built are relatively unknown. However, the earliest recovered boat is a dugout, dating back around 8000 BCE, the Pesa Canoe. Dugout canoes develop pretty much everywhere in the world where large trees grow and have a long history of use even through to today. Their size and complexity can vary dramatically but all are built on the same concept of hollowing out a single tree. While likely one of the first forms of boats made, they are far from easy to produce and are well known for being very time consuming, potentially taking up several weeks to complete, even with more modern tools. While I was in England, visited archeological farm Bunser Farm to learn flint napping in my previous video and copper smelting in an upcoming one, I also got to see a few of their dugouts that they've produced and learn a few of their tips. This one's made from Scots pine. We tested tools from all different time periods on this to see the rate of progress. Um, but there was a lot of moisture when we'd done this. It had only been down about two years, so the fire didn't work too well on there. I had to spend a week living in a shelter like that because we wanted to keep the fire going for a whole week, so we took turns. And when it starts to split, you could mix up pine resin with beeswax and charcoal over a fire. It's basically Stone Age glue. Then this one over here, this is oak. We used fire to hollow it out, so what we did was we put wet clay around the edges, put a fire on there, let it go down a little bit, chipped away the charred area, so it basically just made the work so much easier. Having seemingly simple projects turned to long, drawn out endeavors has kind of been a staple of mine. So I want to nip this in the bud and get it done in the least amount of time possible. So my plan is to build a conservatively small boat, inspired by the Pesa canoe, using the most efficient tool to shape it, fire. Finding just the right tree was the biggest challenge something that is certainly more difficult today than it would have been 10,000 years ago. After a few less than ideal possibilities, the best option we had was a dead pine on my brother's property in Duluth that had blown over several years ago. So in our last video, we prepped the tree by cutting it to size and stripping it of bark, now to turn it into the actual boat. But first, I'd Annalise do a small scale prototype canoe to test run our strategy and see if there are any tools or other things we might need to do first. Go More catnip in here. Continues to be your favorite place to be. Let's uh, see how this goes. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. We're sailing. Good. 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 Let's go over what tools I've already made and have at my disposal and what else I'll need. I have the native copper axe, native copper adds, a stone axe, although it's out of commission, and some native copper wedges. Some additional wedges will likely be useful to split such a long log, so we put together a few other options using pieces of antler and wood. We also assembled a second adds using an antler piece as well. Now for the first step, splitting off the top portion of the boat. With no prior boat making experience, this process is going to be mostly learned through trial and error and by trying to best match the known example of the Pesa canoe. 
Yeah, get out of my way. However, there are a few issues. My log is unfortunately a few inches narrower than the Pesa canoe, and as a modern human, I'm considerably larger than what an average human would have been around 10,000 years ago. But because I have no other options for a tree, I'm likely going to be working with some pretty thin margins here. my stick. I can just rip this off. Ah, it's already hollow. <laughs> Full of ants. <sighs> Hope they're ready for a voyage. This is actually gonna speed things up a lot. This part's pretty solid outside of it. I'm gonna bring my uh, digging stick down here today. Oh, no, Eli, watch up, watch up. Hey, we're gonna tip this over. There we go. Let's break this. Don't break our boat. So we got, got, oh boy. <laughs> got the top third of it cut open. Found out like the part I actually wanted to sit in is already pretty much hollow. So now we just gotta, gotta drag this out of the woods to where we're gonna burn it and uh, burn out the rest. We we're gonna burn it to size. Tried to cut it a bit long so we had extra in case this was too rotten. So hopefully it's not too heavy and we can get it out to where we're gonna burn it. You may have noticed the few extra little hands helping me along this video from the intrepid and persistent assistance of my brother's kids that inevitably comes along with filming on his property. But when I'm not keeping them occupied with burning out canoes, I get a little help from our longtime sponsor, Milk Chemistry. Milk Chemistry provides small scale science experiments that you can do with your niece and nephews to both keep them entertained, but also to help them learn a little more about the fundamentals of science and nature you'll need if you ever try to rebuild your own civilization from scratch. Check them out and click the link below for 25% off. All right, so it took five of us, but we were able to haul this guy out of the woods into this clearing where we can now start to burn it. And it actually ended up being fairly rotten on the inside. We've been clearing it out with the ads and other copper tools, chipped out all of the rotten bits. And I think it's actually gonna help us a lot because it's just on the inside and the outside still seems completely solid. So it's probably saved us a good many hours of burning. Hopefully the outside holds up so far. It looks pretty solid. Next we're going to start the fire, move it into here. But because some parts of it are really close to the desired width, I'm going to take some of the clay and pack it around all the thin parts to protect it from the fire. So that should uh, allow us to kind of control the fire evenly so I can fit inside of it and hopefully float.
Now we're entering about hour eight of the burn and we've made some pretty significant progress. I'm on the third shift so far and we got most of this end burnt off. Pretty decent grooved on the whole thing so far. So we gotta deepen it a little bit and then widen it wherever I'm gonna sit. Right now it's pretty tight, but hopefully it can uh, expand it a little bit. Now comes the little bit more difficult part of making sure we don't burn too much and burn holes in it. There's already a, a few holes I can tell just from knots and stuff that we'll have to patch, but that shouldn't be an issue. I think we're on track to finishing early actually. Those might be famous last words. about 50 50 chance it's gonna float <laughs> my fingers are burning all right so I got this piece we split off from the top of the canoe I'm going to chip it down try and make some sort of paddle out of it Got the completed boat, got patched up. Seems promising, haven't tested it in water, so now we're going to. It's uh, a little narrow, I can't really sit, but I can kneel. Uh, Lake Superior, beautiful sunny day. I haven't invented any navigational equipment yet. It's too foggy to see the sun or the stars, so I'm gonna be going completely blind and alone, so she'll be fine. So at the very least, if this doesn't work as a canoe, it'll work as a coffin.
gonna call this a partial success. We made a boat, it actually floats pretty good. It has a couple small leaks that uh, uh, slowly takes on water, but nothing you couldn't bail out as you're going. And for a small child, it works pretty good. But for me, it's uh, kind of the biggest issue is just the shape of the tree and the overall size of it. Unfortunately, we had a very limited option of what we could find. So this is the best we could get, and it falls a little bit short. We have a narrow point on one end, and a spot we burned a little too much on this end, and uh, it's kind of difficult to balance between the two without taking in a bunch of water and sinking. But it holds a small child. They can actually use it as a boat. Unfortunately, the combination of the narrower sides not allowing me to sit lower in the boat, my extra height, this made the boat extra top heavy and tip immediately when I tried to use it. It's a very refreshing dip in the lake. So in an upcoming video, I'll be making further improvements to make it more seaworthy for someone of my size. Adding some outriggers for better stability, as well as thinning the walls further so that it's lighter and rides higher in the water. And some additional patching and sealing of the wood with pine pitch. Then I should hopefully be able to utilize this boat with another technology, fishing. So how much did it cost? Counting for all the labor, including the initial cutting of the tree, it took a total of 43 hours to make it. But it also utilized all of the previous tools I made, including the pottery, which took 13 hours to make, the native copper axe and adze, which took 14 hours, and the stone axe of 45 hours. So to make this boat, including making all the tools, it took 115 hours, or at minimum wage, $920. Next up, I'm making a bow with the other tree I cut down before. So be sure to subscribe to see that. Thanks again to Mel Chemistry for sponsoring this video. Here are the winners for our last drawing we did. Send us your email and we'll hook you up with your free six month subscription. Click the link below to get 25% off your first subscription to Melt Chemistry. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.